we've seen some stuff about TEC, which is thermal electric cooling. So how does that affect us in the PC world? The first question we have to answer, of course, is so what is TEC? So that is a thermal electronic cooler. Okay, so that still doesn't make any sense, right? So what they do is they take two unique semiconductors. One is like a type N and one is like a type P. And they have different electron densities in them. So when you alternate the P and the N, when you put them together, and you put them into a, a, a series, well, here it is right here. This is what I have. So they have, the semiconductors are in the middle and then you have like a ceramic plate on the top and you do have a ceramic plate on the bottom. Now there is, I'll, I call it top and bottom, but there is actually what's called a, a hot side and a cold side. That's why I have mine actually tagged C and H. So what happens is that one side will actually draw more of the heat that's generated away from the system. So it's like a, Imagine this as a small refrigeration system. So it's an electronic compressor or a heat pump. So it actually generates cooling on one side and heating on the other. So it removes the, it removes the heat. That's all cooling does. Cooling doesn't induce cooling. It actually removes heat, thus making things cooler. So that's what these are. I've actually been playing with these for myself gosh, I don't know, quite a while. Even had some ideas of trying to make my own uh, TEC cooler. And truthfully, this technology has been around for a long, long time. I remember back in 2007, it was Ultra Products. So Ultra Products had tried to come up with, and they called it a, a TEC chiller or something to that effect. So they basically had a TEC, and of course they had the heat plate here, and then they stuck a, a massive air cooler on top of it, because that's what you need to do. I mean, the cooling is just gonna go into the CPU, right? So you're gonna cool off the CPU. But the big problem also was trying to get rid of where did the heat go? You don't want to heat up the inside of the case. So they made it go through a big air cooler, and then they cooled it down, trying to keep the heat down. The real problem with these are, is if you get one big enough, this one I think is like 60 watts and 100 watts. I don't think it would build up as much condensation as, as, a, as a bigger one, but it might, but that's the problem. So when you start using this, it can actually freeze up the air, depending on the moisture that's in the air. That's where the problem is. So if you have this and you have, let's say this is your CPU, and you put that on top and on the bottom there's moisture and then the ambient air around it gets to it starts melting the ice that it's formed up no bueno <laughs> right so that's going to start causing electrical shortages which which has basically been the whole problem in the past present maybe excluded because of the new systems that are coming out but that has really been what the issue has been is the moisture how do we control the moisture? In the past, they've tried to do all kinds of dielectric grease, silicones, uh, foam rubber, I mean, all kinds of stuff to keep it kind of contained. Not the right solution, I've always thought. I knew that there's some way that you're always gonna have to measure the temperature and the humidity around the system and figure out how far you can actually go. Apparently, that's where Intel has come in. Intel and EK and Cooler Master have come up with something in conjunction with each other of actually being able to tell what the humidity is. Most people probably haven't even heard of this term, but the dew point. The dew point is how much water can be in the air before it actually turns into water. So in Arizona, our humidity and our dew point's really high because we don't have that much moisture in the air. That's why we use what we able to use a swamp cooler is that we actually add water to the air to cool down the air. Other places of the world or the country actually have an abundance of 
moisture in the air. That's where you get into the trouble. Because once you get down below ambient temperature and the moisture in the air, you start creating water droplets, which start freezing. So that's where you can start getting your sh short circuits at. You need to be able to control or predict what the humidity is and be able to control the actual temperature that this is running to keep it from doing that. It sounds like that's what they're able to do. So I think they have some way of maybe figuring out what the ambient temperature is, which is pretty easy, right? But you need to figure out what the humidity is. So they have to have a humidity sensor somewhere. I'm guessing in their controls or somewhere in, in, the, in the place, maybe there's a probe, I don't know. But once you can figure that out, then you pretty much got this thing figured out. Now, if there's a failure, there's gonna be a failure. But it's a chance we all take. We all take a chance when we put our air cooler on that, the, that it's gonna work fine or that our water cooling is not gonna leak. So we always take chances, seems like every day on this stuff. I'm really kind of excited to see the next steps after this. If this can be controlled like they're saying, this could be kind of a game changer for the whole PC world. The average everyday user may not affect us as much, but then again, it probably will. Because one of the issues now is with CPUs is that they can only go as far as they can because they're generating so much heat and you still have to get rid of that heat. So once they can start lowering the temperature or the heat that's produced by the CPUs, we can get faster and faster speeds. So that's where this is starting to play in. We're just seeing the baby steps of what can really happen with these. I can see this going into large server rooms. Uh, anybody who's ever been into a large server room knows that when you go in there, it's freaking cold, <laughs> okay? It's really cool because you're trying to cool down all the equipment and everything that's running. But if you can cool down the independent equipment with this stuff, that could be a real game changer for everybody. So I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen. Uh, I would hope that maybe at some point in time, I'll actually get one of these in my hands from either Cooler Master or EK or maybe somebody else that's coming up with it and really test it out. So all the testing that I've been doing and playing around that I've been doing, I, I guess I can just kind of throw that out the window because people, smarter people and people with more money than me have actually been able to do this. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and remember, always void your warranty.